I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here. This video is going to be short and sweet. A little this and a little that. Things that we've been doing around the food forest. When I say we, I'm talking about Brian and Bria, my grand angels. We harvested some pears. I preserved them. And also I cleaned out my freezer and made some vegetable soup. Okay? Alright, let's get started. Okay guys, I'm making soup. And let me just share with you. I just clean out my freezer and add a lot of vegetables are frozen when it was hot. Here is some chicken I canned in March of 2020. And here is chicken broth that I canned in March of 2018. And I'm just going to dump some vegetables in here. And let me share this with you. Ball says the labels will last 18 months and that's just to protect themselves. But you'll know when nothing is leaking out of your jar that it has sealed okay and this is a large stock pot and i'm just going to simmer all of these ingredients for about 20 minutes and then i've got a pressure can it and you can check my videos out on how to pressure can quarts that have meat in it and vegetables for 90 minutes pints for 75. guys when i tell you that this broth that was canned in 2018 smells just as fresh as it did the day that I canned it. Chicken broth with just a little fat. Okay, so the jars are out of the canner and I can hear them pinging, meaning that they are sealing. And you wanna follow your canners Man manufacturer's directions on how you should pressure can. If you look real close, you can see that it's still boiling in some of the jars. And you can watch my videos on how to pressure can. But I want you to know that anything that you pressure can in a quart that contains meat must be pressure canned for 19 minutes. And pints can be pressure canned for 75 minutes, these meal in the jars, okay? Very scrumptious, delicious, homemade soup from your homegrown vegetables. All right. I do this twice a year when I clean out the freezer to make room for what I'm going to harvest soon. We're going to go ahead and harvest the pears because some of them are getting sunburned. I'll show you what I mean in a well, minute. This is why we're going to go ahead and harvest them. When the birds and the rodents, the squirrels probably, climb up a tree this tall and start eating on this pear right there, holding on to the tree, it's time to harvest them. Okay? If we don't, they're going to come back and get them all. We want some of our pears. So, the rodents got three of our pears. And I know why they got them. Because this is the color that Stark Brothers says they should be harvested. When they're green with a slight yellow tinge to it. When it got that red tinge to it there, it started getting sunburned. The birds started coming or squirrels started coming and think they're ready to eat because they're softer. And that's what they did. Actually, out of the whole crop, they got four because I noticed one on the ground on Sunday. Today is Monday. So now Bria and Brian are going to take the, uh, what do you call those? Organza bags off of uh, our uh, 
harvest and we'll see what we got. Hey everybody, we have how many pairs, Bria? I'm counting. How many pairs did you say we had? 26. It's not really 26. 26? How many did you say, Brian? I counted 27. Okay, let's count them. Can 1, okay. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 6, 27. Brian is right. Look like this is the biggest pair. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And this is the color that they're supposed to turn according to... Just a minute, Brian. I'm making a video. This is the color that they're supposed to turn according to Stark Brothers. And, this is and just a minute, Brian. Just a minute, Brian. These are key for pairs. I might have said that before. This is the color, right? Brian is right. They're not supposed to get this color because when they get that color, that's when the uh, animals start eating on them. And you can see something was happening there, but it's not too bad. I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to cut this off right here. And again, it, when they start turning this color, that's when they start attacking them. If they turn this color, they become red like apples. And they're not supposed to Well, some pairs are kind of red like that, but... This is when they start picking on them. When I say they, I'm talking about rodents. So we don't want that to happen every year. These are kefir pears. They are good for canning and preserving. And you're supposed to put them uh, in a cool environment, about 70 degree temperature for several days. And every pear uh, variety is different, but that's what Stark Brothers recommend we do for these pears. So I'm going to put these in the grow room right up under the air conditioning vent, and they will get a little softer. But they're not a soft eating pear. They are for preserving. Okay, guys, this is a real simple procedure. Only thing I did was washed and cleaned my pears, scrubbed them, peeled them, diced them up the best way I could, and then I cold packed them in the jars and I added apple juice. I am not going to put any sugar or any type of syrup. I don't like to cook the pears ahead of time because they get a little too mushy in my opinion. I like uh, kind of like crispy pickles. I like my pears the same way, my apples, unless it's applesauce and other fruit. And I just added um, pure 100% apple juice. And then I debubbled it. And I see right there, I still got a piece of peel on there, but it's okay. And I'm going to get all the air pockets out. And when you do that, when you debubble it, the juice or the liquid will go down some. And then you just want to firmly pack it again and add more juice all the way up to that rim about right there. I've already done this. And while I'm here, just real quick, I just want to show you that all of the soup... Uh, sealed and you just simply take the rings off wash them off and store them now back over here um i'm just going to add a little bit more apple juice and this is no added sugar just topping it off just a little bit and then i'm going to debubble again and then i'm going to water bath can this cold water since the fruit is at room temperature the water would be at room temperature and i'm just debubbling again let me some of it go down and then i will clean the rims and since fruit has a lot of natural sugar i'm going to use vinegar on paper towel to clean the rims to make sure that the lids uh adhere and since I am using cold pack, I'm going to heat up my lids. And you can go back and look at my video for how to can applesauce. It's the same way, except, you know, you cut the fruit up and put it in. And just making sure this is all submerged. And then I'll just water back can it. Now, I have a lot of things on my plate today, so I can't go into a lot of detail. This is not a how-to video. Please check my canning list on more um, precise procedures of how to can fruit, cold pack fruit. Uh, this is an excellent book right here. It is the Ball's Blue Book of uh, Preserving, A Guide to Preserve Foods. And it has over 500 recipes, okay? And uh, I'll be back and let you see how it looks when I finish.
Okay, guys, please check out my playlist for more details about canning. It's just too hot right now to make those type of videos. It's been 97 degrees with an index, pardon me, heat index above 100 degrees. And I'll make more of those type of videos in the fall and winter when it gets a little bit cooler. I appreciate you watching this video. Take care, everybody. Grow your own, eat your own. It's not all you can do with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. See you real soon.